Case 623 by Danny Yu. Chapter 24. The time stamp had moved again just over a week. The bump on the asset's belly was not that much larger. It is still barely discernible, except to people who already know what to look for, or know just how trim the asset usually is. For long moments, there seems to be nothing to look out for, not unless you know to pair the time stamps with a schedule of the changing of guards. If you do that, however, you know that less than a minute from now, there will be less manpower outside of the asset's room than otherwise. For the next 40 seconds, the asset stays as it is, reclined and distant, gaze signifying someone who is barely there. Then, all at once, from one moment to the next, the asset appears to come alive. With more strength than anyone knew he had, he rips the restraints apart, and then he's taking his wrists to his own teeth, biting and tearing. Blood is gushing, and the first five technicians sent in lie dead within half a moment. That's just why we wiped him, the scientist says. It was the only way to keep both the asset and the heirs alive throughout the gestational period. Tony woke up with a strangled gasp. Panic flooded his whole body. It took a while to figure out how to even breathe. Jamie! He managed to press up. Jamie! Where is Jamie? The sensation of human hands pushing his bangs out of his forehead was so acute it made him shudder, brought him straight down to earth in a way he wasn't sure anything else could have. He's safe, Tones, Rody's soft voice said. He's in his room, and he's healthy and perfectly all right, and right now he's asleep because it's 3.30 in the morning. Tony squeezed his eyes further shut for a moment, tried to remember everything that had come to pass. Some of it was so distant he couldn't even remember it. Even the things he remembered most clearly felt more like an out-of-body experience than anything else. What happened? He asked. His whole mouth felt like cotton wool, sucking up every bit of moisture afforded to him. Jamie was kidnapped by a terrorist organization, Rody said. You gave yourself up to keep him safe. The big baddie shot him up with an experimental drug. You fixed the drug, tested it on yourself, and used it to stabilize Jamie. Then you took over the enemy base and killed the asshole behind it all. Cap had to fish you out of the ocean, but the short of it is, you got both of you out of there, safe and sound, Tones. Tony sucked in a mouthful of air, tried to remember it all. For a moment, he almost thought it might be possible, but then he had to give it up. Too many details were lost in the recesses of his mind, impossible to access. He hated that, he hated it so much, and it grated like nothing else, knowing he had information without knowing how to process it. Your team was there, though, and in me too, Rhodes adds. You saved Jamie and killed the bad guy all on your own, but because of what you did, we managed to save the president, prevent a hostile takeover of our country, and to unravel and take out a terrorist organization. Tony could damn near hear the smile in his voice. As I stack is higher than it's ever been. Jamie, Tony repeated. He's all right. Rody sighed. Jarvis, another voice, which Tony recognized as Bruce's, got in. Could you please wake up Captain Jamie? Tell them Tony's awake and needs to see them. Guide their way here if they need it. Hey, Brucey, Tony slurred. You didn't have any problem with the big guy, did you? Bruce took a long moment to answer, then. The Hulk didn't do anything they didn't deserve, he said. I was an idiot who experimented on myself, but I was a grown-up idiot. Jamie's not even four years old yet, and they didn't give a fucking... His voice vanished as quickly as it had appeared. Dr. Banner had to remove himself on the premises. Rody said a moment later, he was getting a bit green there. He paused for long moments, and Tony felt the habitual need to fill the silence with chatter. Exhaustion held him at bay, however, and he breathed out a slow breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. What have it, blood puss? Tony asked at last. Rody, rather than waste time on the things Tony could put together on his own, cut right to the core of things. Dr. Banner did a lot of the work himself, he said. He called in a colleague you've had on your watch list for a while in addition to. A Dr. Cho, if you remember her. Tony managed to lift a hand, waved it. Helen, yeah, he said. I remember. I funded a few of her projects. She's the real deal. She helped stabilize whatever it is you and Jamie were shut up with. Neutralized it even with Dr. Banner's help when she had enough of an idea of that serum to see how it desensitized you to emotion and increased aggression. Mostly, anyway. He paused a moment. Since the healing capacity was already there, we took the chance and had your arc reactor and the shrapnel removed. All it's going to do is add to your life expectancy, the number of years you'll get with Jamie. But it had to be removed, Holmes. From the information we've got, it makes you... 
and Jamie, in the high-functioning psychopaths at best. Tony swallowed sharply but nodded. It was also very distant, but he did remember that incredible focus. There was something seductive about it. Or there might have been, if not for how clearly he suddenly remembered not caring at all about Jamie's fear, only about his safety. Ever since he had returned from Afghanistan, Tony had been so painfully aware that safety was so many different fucking things. It wasn't just about being physically alive and unharmed. That was just the easy part. The things that actually mattered in the long run were harder, took so much more out of him, and they were so much more necessary. Jarvis, he said, whatever records we have on extremists, please delete them. He said his memory of himself on extremists was vague at best, but he knew he had been no father like that. Jarvis hesitated for a moment, and then somehow jolted Tony back to something more than his current emotional reality. The reactor was supposed to be gone! Suddenly frantic, Tony reached towards his chest, expecting to find the plexiglass covering that had been a part of his life for all about as long as Jamie had. His hand found nothing but a standard-issue hospital gown. He pushed onto the edges, searching almost frantically. There was nothing! Nothing but smooth skin and strong bones and muscle. Tony slumped back into the bed. Let that settle and register. Any other differences? He heard himself ask. Well, Rody said, according to Jarvis and Dr. Banner and Dr. Cho, you are about 12 to 15 years younger, physically, than you were before. Back at your prime, so to speak. Mid to late 20s, Tony translated that as, and how the fuck was that necessary? He'd been in the 30s before the board of directors began respecting him the first time around that... Who even cared about that kind of vanity? What this really meant was more years with Jamie, and Tony would give anything for that. Absolutely anything. Still, it was so difficult to reconcile this reactor-free body with the one he had lived in his whole life that it made his breath catch, made him feel as though someone was doing their very best to pull the rug out from under him. He could already tell it would take everything he had to stay balanced, with a heavy blink that didn't actually give him much of a view of his surroundings. He focused back in on the order he'd given Jarvis in its first place. Delete all files pertaining to extremists. Some part of him still wanted to do that, never wanted to have to even imagine that level of dissociation and everything that went with it ever again. But on the other hand, this might keep Jamie alive where nothing else could, if something beyond Tony's comprehension were to happen again. Or it might keep Tony alive when he might otherwise die and leave Jamie alone, and that, that was something he suddenly couldn't dismiss. Jarvis, he said at last, keep the data to yourself, please. I want you to only allow access when there is no other choice. Yes, sir, Jarvis responded. Unless Tony was very mistaken, there was more than a small measure of relief in his voice. A moment later, Tony was distracted from thinking about any of that at all when the door opened and kept... Steve led Jamie in by the hand. Tony slowly blinked his eyes open just in time to see Jamie sprinting towards him. Breathing such a deep sigh of relief, it was almost painful. Tony opened his arms and wrapped them around his baby boy, holding him tight and screw it. He never planned to let go ever again. I love you, baby boy, he said softly, carefully breaking his fingers through Jamie's soft, dark hair. Love you too, Daddy, Jamie replied, clutching him so tightly it near hurt. Tony didn't care one bit so long as they were both still alive to feel it. Jamie clutched his bucky bear close when Tony walked him toward Dr. Sanchez's office. Tony couldn't help but share in his anxiety, even as he did his very best to show as little of it as possible. He had tried so hard to make sure this wouldn't be necessary, to make sure they wouldn't need the kind of too rough, too curious outside help Tony had had foisted on him as a child. Thank fuck he knew Sanchez already, at least a little, or he might not have had any clue what to do when his baby began to wake up sobbing and screaming from nightmares. That still ground on his nerves. The fact that Jamie was in pain and nothing Tony did could seem to help him. It was almost physically painful seeing this kind of fear and anger in him, and at such a young age, too. Tony wished to all the gods in existence that there was something he could do. Might have done, but no matter how hard he tried to contact Thor's dad, and he had actually tried, nothing seemed to work. So good old Earth psychology it was, even if Tony was no more sure of that than he was of the reliability of old Thor's gods. It's all right, baby boy, 
Tony forced himself to say when the doors opened and Jamie's name was called. It'll be all right. As he watched Jamie enter Sanchez's office, he wasn't certain if he had been talking to his son or to himself. Out of the two of them, Jamie had always been more resilient, had only ever started giving in to nightmares after the whole extremist thing. Tony... Tony wasn't sure when he had last slept, whether he would ever get a full night's sleep again. He was wrecked. He was done. So fucking done. He had been building armors again, sure, and new adorations of the Iron Cradle with code no one in existence could hope to crack, but even so, it didn't make him feel safe. He wasn't sure anything ever would. All he could hope for was a full night's sleep for his baby boy. Tony, well, he was willing to admit, he himself might very well be a lost cause.